See here how the cut actually takes place, not on the flat of the bowl surface, but in front of the gouge. Surface A here has already been cut. Surface B here is about to be cut. This wall in front of the tool is where the cut is actually happening. Each time the bowl goes round once, this surface is recut, recreated. The old surface is peeled away and the new one appears. The force of this cut thrusts the tool back against its bevel. The bevel rests on this part of the wood here, behind the cut. When a gap in the surface comes round, the tool is thrust into it by the force of the cut, as well as by the hand that is pushing the tool into the cut. This hand on the steel resists that drop force. Remember this wall in front of the cut. I will mention it again. Watch now again how the tool is held in tension between the two hands. The rest position is also important. The cut that moves along parallel to the rest is easy to control. Cutting away from the rest like this is also easy. Cutting at such an angle that the tool comes round at right angles to the rest or greater is less easy. Cutting in towards the rest like this reduces control over the gouge considerably. When cutting towards the rest, the tool wants to slip down the rest. It does not then give the resistance necessary to controlled cutting. Rest height is less important. I usually have it slightly above center on the outside and a bit below when inside the bowl. So long as the gouge can reach the bit you want to cut, it is purely a matter of convenience. With the tool cutting on the ridge, as here, whether the handle is up here or down here, the bevel is still on behind the cut. Look at it from underneath, though, and you can see more. Now, the bevel is in line with the face of the cut as well as behind it. Now it's not. It is still on behind the cut, but at the actual point of cut it is way off the surface. The tool is actually scraping. Even though the bevel is on at the point of cut, it is scraping. The handle height is the key to the quality of cut. The bevel on behind the cut controls safety and shape. The height of the handle controls the quality, controls whether it is really cutting bevel on at the point of cut or is only on behind the cut. Try this exercise. Swing the gouge handle during the cut, way up here, keeping the bevel on, to right down like this where both lead bevel and trailing bevel are in line with the surface. Your hands will begin to tell you at what point in the swing this or that type of wood best likes to be cut. Such an exercise builds ability into your hands. The fingernail gouge relies on the bevel, same as the traditional drum. One of the advantages of the fingernail grind is pull cuts. There are two distinct types of pull cut. One simply cuts towards the handle, like this. The other cuts towards the rest, as well. This is more difficult. The secret is in this swing down on the handle as the tip moves in towards the rest. Keep the cut on the leading side of the gouge. Raise the tip up to keep the bevel on. The moment the bevel leaves the wood, this cut will catch. Cuts like this can allow you into tricky corners that wiser men than me might avoid. For removing quantities of wood, the gouge may be used tip against the wood and cutting on the side. From underneath like this, you will notice that in front of the cut, the bevel is engaged by rolling the tool, where the traditional grind requires a swing. 
The roll is the key to the quality of cut with this type of gouge. More on this gouge later.